Hello and welcome to Dickinson's Real Deal. On this show, I help members of the public get the very best price for their antiques and valuables. They get a choice. Sit down with one of our regular dealers. They're going to try and buy your treasures off you for a sum of money on the table today. £450 now. Just a little bit more. If I don't think that's enough money, I'm going to say to you, no way, have a gamble. Go to auction. You just might get a little bit more money there. £500 in total then. Today, the show comes to you from Bangor in North Wales. There's a great crowd of people. They've been here since early this morning. They have a decision to make. Do they walk away with cash in their pocket? Do they gamble and go to auction? But either way, they want the real deal. Our dealers have clocked in for another day. Seller Keith is with James Late. <laughs> Dashboard clock, apparently. I think we need to know more about this before I put any money down. I'll let you know. I've paid quite a bit for it. I'm hoping to make a little bit extra. Uh, and that's what it's all about, really. I think if you make a little bit, you should go home happy. Let's see if James is in a spending mood. Well, it's a clock. It certainly tell, is. Tell me more. <laughs> well, it's 25 past 10. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, it's a bit it's slow. no good. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's something I acquired off a friend of mine uh, maybe three months ago. All right. Um, I've bought it off her to make a few pounds. And what do you think it is? Why is it at such a funny angle? I think it's been adapted to look like a desk clock. Right. I actually think it's a vintage car clock. All the vintage car clocks that I can recall seeing are, are always set into the dashboard. Now, if this was set into the dashboard, it would be drooping down, so you'd have to sort of go like that to look at the time. I, I know what you're saying, but as I said, it's, I think it's been adapted. So you think, to... it's, you think this, has been, this has been cut? Yes. At an angle? Yeah. So it's been ruined? No. As a no, vintage car no, clock? No, 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 no. It's been cut in half, Keith. <laughs> it's no good to anyone. <laughs> uh, and now, so you're thinking it's dating from about the 20s? Uh, possibly, yes. Yes. Yeah. I don't think it's any earlier than that, do you? Uh, maybe. I mean, it's a nice quality dial, for sure, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yes. Um, and have you looked up this maker, George Gilmore? Uh, he's from Glasgow, that's all I know. Yeah, uh, even I know still... that, because it says so on it, doesn't it? Well, it does, it? <laughs> oh, that's a first. <laughs> it's, it's, but it's a nice quality enamel dial. I'm not convinced that it's a car clock. I, I really haven't seen anything that, that looks like that. Um, so, let's put some money on the table. All right. Is this your first venture into dealing? Uh, or have you been doing it for years? I'm known as Honest Keith. Um, Are you? Oh, indeed. <laughs> until, you came, until you came here. <laughs> uh, we'll, so, we'll test your honesty. Okay, then we will. 10, 20, 30, 40. £50. Pounds. Not even a sniff. Not even a sniff? Not a sniff. But it shows you a profit. It doesn't. No, it doesn't. No, it? no, no. Deal. That's no. no good. We'll have to try a bit harder then. You certainly will. <laughs> uh, £70. Pounds. Uh -huh. But you're still not impressed, are you? No, no. There's David. Now, I'm watching from the sidelines here, and I know this has gone to the right man. What we're judging this is, is a novelty item for a gentleman's desk. Uh, they are something quite desirable. 80 to 120 is what the independents have said. 70 is not a bad offer. If you fancy a gamble, you just might get a little bit more, but I don't think it'd be much more than £20 more, so it's your call. I'll try one more note, Keith. Um, I'll stick a tenner down, so that's 80. Well, if you put one more on there, I'll be in profit. Ah, so now we know where we are. Yes. <laughs> you, you've paid 80 quid for it. Yes. Do I want to pay more? That's the thing. Well, we'll, we'll gamble. So there's, there's your tenner profit, 90 pounds. That's very nice. We've got a deal? We've got a deal. Thanks very much. Thank you very you really much, You really are on this, Keith, aren't you? <laughs> I certainly am. <laughs> I was absolutely made up with James. He seems as honest as myself. <laughs> I'm now the proud owner of a clock of unknown use. But will James make a profit? Find out later in the show. Next, it's time for Debbie to have a dabble. The little tiny scent bottle is sweet. Anything miniature always is good. Holds its value. Um, a nice little novelty item. I am going to have a go at it. I'd like to get an extra five pounds from it and just say, you know, it can go towards my holiday. 
It's to buy an extra martini, won't it? Well, let's see if Debbie takes to the bottle, Edith. Edith, yes. you brought in this uh, sweet little scent bottle with yes. you today. Tell me all you know about it. Well, I acquired it uh, when I was a young girl. I used to be interested in auctions, and I bought the box that it was in with a lot of other things, but this was in the... Uh, that was in there? In there. What I think it is, is um, a little scent bottle that would have been hung from a lady's chatelaine. That's right, yeah. The little bottle itself has an opening top. The glass itself is nice. It's in good order. Um, it's what we call bohemian glass. Yes. And it's made by having white glass overlaid with blue glass and then etched back to create the design on the bottle. So I will be making you an offer, um, but it won't be a huge amount of money. Right. 10, 20 pounds. Edith, what do you think about that? Oh. You really screwed your face up there, oh, me. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> she screwed her face up at me. Well, you, you see, Debbie, Edith has brought along her treasure. It's somewhere between 20 and 40 pounds. Now, what do you think? Well, what I think is this. Our dealers have got to sell it and make a profit. Of but course. at the same time, when we get senior citizens on the show, I'm a senior citizen, and they bring along their treasures, we've got to try and get the best price we can. <laughs> I'm going to say, Debbie, can we just have a little bit more? It might not be the greatest profit, but it is pretty. And can we get another tenner out of you? I'll tell you what I'll do. If you'll give a tenner, I will give a tenner. Give a tenner. I'll give oh, a tenner. Thanks. And then we know... There's my ten. And there's my ten. And then, oh. darling, we know that you've sold your treasure and got a good price for it. Thank you very much. You're so spoiled. You're happy with your 40. I'm quite happy with That's that. That's fantastic. Thank Thanks for bringing Thank it in. Thank you so much. Thank you, darling. Thank you. David very kindly gave me an extra ten pound, which Wonderful. A shake of his hand would have been enough. <laughs> Janice Kehoe has been joined by a bit of a wheeler dealer. I bought them at auction about six months ago on the phone. Paid perhaps a little bit over the odds for them. Paid £600. I thought it was all right, but with a bar's premium, it was nearly 750 Best work your magic, Alan, if you want to see a profit. What have you brought for us today? I've bought this beautiful pair of Moorcroft McIntyre vases yep. in the Alhambra pattern. And how long have you had them? Only about six months. About six months? Yeah, bought them at an auction. I saw them on the catalogue and yep. quite fancied them. I do collect Moorcroft. Yeah. I've got about four or five cabinets full at home. Yep. I hadn't got any in this pattern, so I was quite excited when I bought them. And? And since I bought a bigger vase in the same pattern. Right. And my wife, who's here, says I can only collect one of each pattern. So these have to go, I'm afraid, hopefully. OK. Now, they were made about 1900. I love the shape. It's shape. That's the, what, the that's shape what is beautiful. To me, the shape is the best part made, about yeah. it. Um, they do have some rubbing, I'm afraid, yeah. uh, to the gilding. Yeah. And well, they're... that's over 100 years old. I it think is. It, you'd be worried if it didn't have that, I would think. Apart from that, they're in uh, reasonable condition. So I will make you an offer on them. Right, well, we'll see what we can do for right. you. So um, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, and 40 pounds. Wouldn't even buy one yet. Wouldn't even buy one? No. Gosh. Wouldn't even buy, as a pair, always a premium for a pair. I'll, I'll go a bit further. We've got 160, uh, 170. Is that the best offer? Well, you haven't asked David. me. You haven't asked me the important question: how much I actually paid for them only six months ago. How much did you pay? I paid on the telephone six hundred pounds for them, pounds. but that yeah. wasn't with buyer's premium, yeah. which was over twenty percent. I actually paid over seven hundred pounds for them. Right. At the moment, the independent value is the same, forty-six. Yeah. Yeah. 
they are fabulous. Great looking lot, goods of the moment, still in fashion, bidders out there at the auction could easily be fighting for such an yeah. item. Unless there's a lot more money on the table, see you at the auction, buddy. I agree with you. OK. Right, I'll try and do a little better. So if I take that 10 away, we go up to 200 and 50 pounds. 250 on the table, Alan. What would you like to do? Well, you've bought that one, Janice. I'll take this one back <laughs> and I'll take you 250 pounds, if that's OK. So I take it you're going to auction then? Well, if that's the best offer you can do, I'm afraid so. I'm afraid it is. I'll put that back. Okay. Good luck. I hope uh, you do really well at the auction. I'm sure I'll do a lot better than that. All right. Thank you. Thank you. One hundred. Determination from Alan, but will he reap his reward in the sale room? Three forty. Three sixty. Three eighty on commission. Quiffing. Find out after the break. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from North Wales. Before the break, we saw keen Moorcroft collector Alan turn down Janice's cautious bid of £250 for his pair of vases. I didn't even have to consider it, so I'm taking them to auction and I'm sure I'll do a lot better. Will Alan make his money back in the sale room? Today's auctioneer Simon Bauer has his gavel at the ready. You brought along a very, very nice pair of McIntyre vases. Moorcroft, of course, worked for McIntyre before uh, opening his own factory. You sat down with Janice and she offered you... <laughs> I know, she didn't know anything about pottery, goodness me. I hope you listened to this, Janice. She offered you £250. You weren't happy with that. I know, I wasn't. They are coming up now. The reserve is 300 quid. That's a bit on the low side. Let's see what happens. We're straight in at uh, 300 pounds. Let's straight in. Straight in at 300. That's the reserve. 340. 360. 380 on commission. Creeping. Okay. And 400 bid. 420. 440. 460. 480. 500 at 500. 500. Getting near to what you paid for them now. Anybody in the room now for another 20? At 500 pounds and bid. You're all out in the room and the phone. It's with me on commission at 500 pounds and sold then. 500. 500 pounds. We have the usual dreaded commission to take yeah. up, and it makes 440 pounds. Yeah, not my best deal, no. He's a very shrewd buyer, this man. Not this time. But I think you brought them to the marketplace perhaps a little bit yeah, too perhaps. soon. The real deal on the day: 500 quid. Take home 440. Chin up, Alan. You made almost double what Janice offered you. Back to the action in the den where Mark Stevens has been joined by Carol. Nice to meet you too. My expectation is that I'm going to get quite a lot of money for this watch. I've had it for a long time and I don't want to just let it go for nothing, you know? A very nice nine carat half hunter. Yes. Where did you come by this? Well, um, from my father and it was his father's, so it was my grandfather's. Right, so it's been in the family for quite a, a while. A long time, yes. Right. One thing special about this, isn't it? Yes. It's got the magic word on it. Yes, begins with R. It certainly does. Rolex. Yes. Should we have a look? Yes, do. OK. What have you got? Very nice casing in nine carat gold. Yes. But when we push the top of the watch here, yes. and that reveals the white porcelain face with the word Rolex yes. on the front of the dial. And if we turn the watch over, so we're going to open the back up, now, in the back here, those are the three marks, hallmarks, and the full front in here is 375. Yes. But underneath there is a maker's mark, but it hasn't got Rolex on it. Oh. Because the mark, if I'm not mistaken, is ALD. Yes. Now, ALD is Denison Watch Company, and Denison were the official case makers for Rolex. Right. So it ties in perfectly. Yes. So it's very genuine. It's very genuine, but we ha what we have to have, which is the key, is when we open, there we have it. Oh, yeah. Must be marked. And this one it, is one of the extra Prima movements. Oh. There's extra Prima, the best ones are ultra Prima, um, and then you have the observatory quality. 
still a good watch. Yeah. Very nice quality, ticking away. And we've got the presentation on the back here. Was yes. this, this your was family? This was my grandfather. Right. Presented in 1933. Yes. Was this for his uh, retirement present? Yes. Uh, that's what I thought. Well, it's a very nice thing. It's in lovely condition. And there's just one thing that we've got to do now. There is, yes. We've got to talk about money. We have. Right, shall I see what I've got? Yeah. Let's have a look in the pocket. £50, £100, £150, £200. I'm not stopping. £250, £300, £350, £400. I think I was expecting a little bit more than £400. A little bit more? <laughs> no. Yes. no a, a, quite yes. a bit more, actually. <laughs> I think it's a good time to get David in. Yes. And here he comes I now. Well, I've looked at it from the sidelines. I mean, it's in mint condition. It's a goer. The independent values, they've gone 4,500. Mm. Um, this is a man who I think will be loving that, will want to buy it. It has a brand name that he can sell like that. He's probably already got his hand in his pocket because he wants to take this home, I know. <laughs> Trouble is, Thank David you. can read my mind so much now, you know. Yeah, well, I've watched your telly <laughs> and I can, I think. Oh, good. Uh, right, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. And I'm going to put another 50 on the table. £450 now. Well, it sounds a reasonable offer, but I was expecting a little bit more. Just a little bit mm. more. Oh, Carol, you're driving a real hard bargain for me here. You're cutting all my profit out. <laughs> I'll tell you what I'm going to do. 455 and one more for luck. £460 on the table. Have we got a deal, Carol? Yes, we have got a oh, deal. Oh, that's fantastic. Thank you very much indeed, Carol. Thank you. Thank you. Something I like, something I wanted to own, and a very nice lady too. I was so pleased, I pushed him to the limit to get what I wanted. James is looking pretty pleased with his next item. I quite like those kind of 40s landscapes, tarnscapes. Don't know how much it's worth, but I'll have a go. I'm building a house at the moment, so um, I need some money to pay the bills. Buy some slates with whatever I get. Just hope he's generous today. Well, let's see if you can concrete the deal, Derek. Nice picture. Yeah, I like it, yeah. And I'm glad you do. Yeah. I do like it, yeah, I think it's nice. It's, um, it's very kind of evocative of its age, isn't it? Yes, yeah. Which is 1940s. I'm not sure when it was painted. It was painted by Fred Bottomley, northern artist. Yeah. 1944, it was exhibited at the Royal Academy. So it probably was painted around about then, I would think. I'd have thought so, yes. yeah. Probably the, if you're a bus not... fan, you might notice. Well, you might, but I think, I'm, <laughs> uh, you know, there's... there's ladies' outfits look very 40s, do not they? Yeah, yeah. Um, so what's the history of it? How long have you had it? It was given to me by my aunt and uncle for yeah. my 40th birthday. Right. Do you know where it is? It's Lord Street in Southport. Oh, right, OK. I don't, I don't know Southport at all. Yeah. But was, did, did the artist come from that part of the world? I believe he was northern, Rochdale yeah. area, I believe. Right. He studied at the St Ives School of Art. Oh, did he? Yeah, I, his name rings a bell, but I, I can't remember very much about him. I mean, so why are you selling it? Um, it's been in storage the last three years because oh, um, I'm doing a self-built house at the moment. Right. And oh, I that's expensive. I need to convert this into slates. Yeah. I'm afraid <laughs> the um, the money's run out before the bills. So. Yeah. Okay. So, see how many slates uh, you can buy with with my offer. Yeah. We'll have a go. Fifty. One. One fifty. Two. Two fifty. Well, bearing in mind it was exhibited at the Royal Academy. Yes. I mean, I'm, I'm no art um, authority, but I'd have thought that would give it some some value. So anyway, we'll we'll carry on. Put a bit more out. Two fifty. Three hundred. Mmm. Mmm. This is a big house. I need lots of slates. <laughs> What's on the table there? A measly three hundred, David. <laughs> well, first of all. I know this area very well. This is Lord Street in Southport. The artist, Fred Bottomley, I don't know as well. Now, the estimate from the independent values and the auctioneers may be a little bit on the low side. They're saying two to 250. 300 pounds is on the table. I don't think it's a lot of money for what it is. It's a nice image, so it's your choice. 
See if you can get any more. If you feel you want to gamble, it may be worth a gamble. He said maybe worth a gamble. He said maybe. Mm. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> All right, well, I'll put... I'll put my hand in my pocket again. Yeah. Um, so 350. Another 20 and I'll do it. 370? Yep. Or digging deep. Thinking of your poor roof. Oh, there we thank are. you. 370. Thank you very much. Thanks very much for bringing it along. Thank you. I'll try and find it a good home now. More than £100 over the estimate. You did like it, James. The more I look at it, the more I like it. And I have a feeling, once it hangs on my wall at home, it's going to stay there for a bit. Nice thing. Another loss. Oh, come on, James, be positive. Coming up... The reserve is 80. There are people vying for this all round the room. A dishy lot causes a stir at auction. 160, 170, 180. One lots of people bidding for this. But where will it end? Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from the historic city of Bangor in North Wales. The day is in full swing and Debbie's cooking up her next deal. Flipware is very difficult to age and that's why it's very difficult to know whether it's a brand new piece or a very early piece. So Michael, tell me about this dish that you brought on the show. Yes, I inherited it from my late mother. Before that, it came from her mother and I'm looking to sell it. Right. Uh, it's too large. One of the things I will say is about this type of pottery, it's called slipware pottery and it started hundreds of years ago in Britain. When I say slipware, it's this sort of pipe work where they squirt the, the glaze in crudely to make a pattern. One of the biggest difficulties is ageing it because it wasn't back stamped, it was rarely marked. Um, turn it over and on the bottom you've got this stoneware base. It has very little sign of any wear at all. One would maybe expect nibbles and chews and chips and it's in mint condition. Now, it may have just never been used for all those years, I don't know. But I'm going to be sceptical about its age and my offer will reflect the fact that I don't think it's much more than 100 years old. 20, 40, 60 pounds. What do you think about that? No. Am I a long way off in You're your mind? A long way off, yes. I'm going to go one more. 70 pounds, and that reflects really my uncertainty of its age. Michael, I, I've come in at this stage because the independent values and the auctioneers, they've all got an opinion, we've all got an opinion, Debbie's got an opinion. What you have here purports to be a 17th century slipware dish, it's certainly in that style. Now, our independent values have placed a date of about 1900 on that. They say between 70 and 120 pounds. I mean, what's on the table is a safe bet, 70 quid. I don't think you can do much worse than the auction, and you might just get someone that thinks, hmm, is it earlier? You might get someone that will bid a little bit more money. Thank you, David. I'm really reluctant to put any more money down, but I certainly don't think you'll do worse than that offer. Yes. <laughs> Is that your final offer? That's my final offer. Yes. Thank yeah. you, Debbie. I'd like to go to auction. Good luck with it. I look forward to seeing how you get on. Thank you. I think that I'm not worried that I've been unfair with the offer I made. You might not be worried, but will you be sorry, Debbie? Over to the Duke in the sale room. You sat down with Debbie, our dealer. She said, I don't believe in this, and so I'm going to offer you £70. You turn that down. Yes. You're gambling. You're here at the auction. It's coming up now. The reserve is 80. Is it going to make the £80 or more? Ah, that's a beauty. Start with him. Bid to me at £30 a start. On the slip, we're at 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. And it's at the reserve. 100, 110. 120. They like it, they're going for it. 140, 150, 160, 170, 
180, 190. Lots of competition, lots of people bidding for this. 210. A 210 bid, 220, 230 on the back wall, a 230 bid, 240, 250 on the back wall, 260, 270. There are people vying for this all around the room. 270 and sold. 270. Gambler's gone down at £270. Take off the commission and it's somewhere near to £238. What's your first reaction? Very pleased, actually. You're pleased with that? Under the current climate, I'm very pleased, yes. Michael says he's happy and satisfied. I'm happy and satisfied, taking home approximately 238 quid. The items are still coming in thick and fast here in Bangor. Silk printed commemorative for Queen Victoria's Silver Jubilee. I think it's quite unusual, but how saleable it is, I'll have to think. Best think fast, James. Let's get the deal underway. Donna, hello. Hi. Very nice to meet you. I'm James. So tell me what you brought along. This looks very interesting. Um, basically, it's just a piece of silk with a bit of history about an orphanage. Um, so it's printed silk. Yeah. And it's dated. 1887, so that's Queen Victoria's Rain. Silver Jubilee, or was it Golden Jubilee? Golden Jubilee, Golden. that's right, so 50 years. A lot of printed silk commemoratives. I've never seen one from an Indian. And it's a fantastic kind of brown nosing letter, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's telling her how marvellous she is. Yeah. And that in her name, this fellow Hafiz Sheikh Abdul Karim is going to found an orphanage in Meerut. Do you know if it's still going? To my knowledge, it is, yes. You looked it up, have you? Yes, oh, on the internet. That's interesting, yeah. And it is actually still going. Yeah. And this was obviously printed in India, sent to England. Yeah. I mean, I don't know whether this was the only one or whether he printed lots of them and they were given as souvenirs. I've no idea. And what about the bag? Um, I don't know if the bag came with it. I've always known it to be kept in here. Yeah. My feeling is that this is possibly being made later mm -hmm. to fit this. It doesn't quite look 1887 to me. No. I think it's an unusual item. So what's the history of it in your family? Um, it was my mother's. I remember that she used to show it as we were children. Yeah. She'd pull it out and often show it to us and say it could be worth a lot of money. <laughs> then it was put back. <laughs> um, and then when she unfortunately died, I yeah. came across it and yeah. I've kept it basically ever since. Yeah. yeah. So, you don't want it anymore? Well, I'd so rather it's... see it in the museum where... So it it's over be... to me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, basically. Put some money on the table. Hard thing to value, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100 pounds. Are you impressed with that 100 pounds? Maybe. Well, I have to tell you, uh, it's very interesting. Now, our independent values, an auctioneer, they haven't gone for this at all. They've gone 30, 50 pounds. You've gone 100 pounds. Yeah. I can't fault that. I couldn't even think of sending you to auction. I think you'd have to go with this. Rather than gambler's auction, that is a good price. So I think that's good advice, Donna. <laughs> <laughs> Are you happy with that? Yes, I am. OK, yes. we've got a deal. Yes. Thank you very much Thank for you very much. along. I was quite surprised that the off-screen people valued the silk at, what was it, 20 to 30 or something? And I went straight in at 100. Nice thing. Pleased with it. Crikey, James, that was top money. Find out later if he can still squeeze out a profit. Coming up. Wow, what a fabulous collection. The Duke gets to the point. Unless there's more money on the table, I'm going to say you and I, my love, should go to the auction. But will Janice pin this deal down? Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from North Wales. We've seen all sorts in the den today. Mary's planning on some top money from Janice. I've brought along hat pins. I've collected them for the last 30 years and now I'm hoping to be able to get at least a thousand pounds. The Duke and auctioneer Simon Bauer have spotted a quality name in the collection, so we're also keen to get in on the action. Hello, I'm Janice. Hello, Janice. And you're Mary? Yes. Hello, Mary. And you're... I'm Catherine. Catherine. Hello. Are you Mary's granddaughter? I am, yes. Oh, you're here yeah. to support your granny? I am, yeah. yeah. Um, why have you decided to sell them today? Well, nobody seems to collect nowadays, yeah. and so I thought, well, I might as well see where the money goes. Yeah. Else, um, 
keep them in a cabinet yeah. and not know. Not know anything. I'm a curious. <laughs> and which one of these is your favourite? My favourite is this one. This was the one my mother-in-law gave me and started me on the collections. Yeah. And when, when did she give you this? It's about 1964. 1964. Oh, they're amazing. Now, all these here, those are made by a gentleman called Charles Horner, who was based in yeah. Halifax. And then you've got all these ones. That, there seems to be quite a Scottish theme in here. It does, yeah. Yeah, you've got quite a few thistles yeah. and golf clubs. Did you play golf? No. No. <laughs> And there's a little brooch here as well, that's yes. Charles Horner as well. So where did you buy all these? Did you get any of them on the internet or anything? Yes, and some of them were from car boots. Car so. boots, yeah. Which one of these is your favourite, Catherine? Um, the Cecil one's my favourite. And why yeah. is that? It's got a nice um, Scottish theme to it. Yeah. And it's a bit colourful. Oh, yeah. right. And have you any interest in collecting? No, I don't collect many things, really. Not many no. things at all, no. no. Yeah. We've got the silver ones that are all Charles Horner here. That's where all the value is going to be in, in the hat pins. And these groups here, all different materials, still very collectible, but not quite the same value. Now, how are you on ladies' hat pins, Simon? <laughs> <laughs> I don't get off, often asked that question, but it's a lovely collection. Lovely collection. Amazing. What I think is so nice about this collection, the lady has taken such care to pick very, very individual pieces. There are quite a few of Charles Horner there. Now, is he a manufacturer and a retailer? I believe both, yes, and one of the, one of the most uh, well-known and, and well-respected, so top end of the market. Yeah, how will you go about valuing something like this? Well, lots of different examples, as you say. There's some enamel, there's some silvers, a couple of gold ones. So you have to try and break it down individually, but. You just have to say 800, 1,000, maybe a bit more. You know. Well, I think it's a wonderful collection, and we have a deal looking at them now. I know she's going to like them. Let's see what she puts on the table. Do you know what you'd like for them? Roughly. You're not going to tell no, me. No, no, we'll say anything else. 20, 40, 60, 80, 90, 200. 20, 40, 60, 80, 300, 20, 40, 60, 80, 400, 20, 40, 60, 80. Now, it's 500 pounds there. Um, just a little bit more. A little think, bit more. Yeah. A lot more. A lot more. A lot more. <laughs> right, OK. Um, I'll put a bit more on the table and we'll see what we can do. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 1, 2, 3, 4. We're at 600 now. Am I still a long way away? Um, just a little bit. David's here. Let's see what David oh, says. Good. Mary, isn't it? Yes, it is. Well, let me first of all say, wow, what a fabulous collection. Oh, I'm glad How many like years it. have you been collecting these? Over 30. Absolutely superb. It's not going to surprise you when I tell you 800 to 1200 pounds is the estimation from the auctioneer and from the independent valuers. Now, I think the offer on the table is sensible, but I don't think it's good enough. I think to do this collection justice, unless there's more money on the table, I'm going to say you and I, my love, should go to the auction and maybe there'll be lots of ladies looking for hat pins. Absolutely extraordinary collection. Thank you. Okay. I'll put some more money on the table. 20, 40, 60, 80. Now we're at 700. Because well, auction. Look at goes auction, I think. What about if I put another 50 pounds down? And then that's 750. What do you want to do? Do you want to auction? You go to auction, I think. Yeah. Oh, well, have a really good Thank time at the auction, much. and I do hope it does well for you. I was really disappointed not to get the hat pins. I thought it was a fantastic collection. I think she will do better at auction. It is the best place for them. All opinions pointed towards the sale room, so it's time for Simon to step up to the rostrum. 
So what we've done to try and get the best price, we have split them up into 10 lots. Each lot has a reserve of £80. You turn down on the dealer's day an offer of £750. You didn't think that was enough. We didn't think it was enough. And so we persuaded you to gamble. I only hope the buyers are here because this collection of hat pins, I'm going to say sensational. Here it is now. Let's see how we go. £70 I'm bid. It's £70 bid for the first lot. 80 90 We're over the £80. Pounds. 110 120 130 140 Yes, telephone's here against bidders in the room. Sold at 150 then. OK, first lot is £150. We're away and running. So, things are looking promising. Simon's kept busy over the next few lots. Here we go. At 70 bit, 80. Going over the reserve at 90 pounds. 100 and away. I make that 250 so far. 110, same buyer again at 110. 360 so far. 130, 140, 150. Another 150 and away. Here we go, this is lot five. Is it 120, is it 30? Strong competition, lots of people here in the room bidding against the telephones. At 150 and sold. 660 pounds so far. So halfway through and we're only 90 pounds away from Janice's offer. More to come. I mustn't miss this, here we go again. 150 bid, 160. Hammers up at 160. I make that six um, 820 pounds. We're coming in for lot seven. 140 on the phone at 140. 140 just in time. Telephone's coming. 160 on the phone and sold at 160. 980 pounds. We're going in now for lot eight. 100 and bid, 100 and bid, 100 and bid. Here to do the best mine at 110. I can see Mary is getting quite excited now. And now she realises there's a nice few quid to be got here. 60 again at 160 and sold. £1,140. Nearly £400 over Janice's offer, and now it's into the final straight. We're now going into lot nine, two more lots to go. Nice smile on your face. Yeah. Happy? Happy. OK, that's what we want to see. 90 and bit. On the phone then at 90. That makes £1,230. One lot to go here. 110 bid, 120. 130. 140. 150 bid. Uh, 150 bid at 150 pounds and bid on the phone. You're all out in the room again. Hammers up at 150 and away then. There's a grand total here. I'm just tossing it up. The entire collection brought 1,380 pounds. Taking off the commission, I make that with a bit of that around 1,214 pounds coming back to you. What I want to know is what does it feel like, Mary, to see 30 or 40 years of collecting go in front of your eyes and it's dispersed here amongst many people in the room and on the telephone. 1,380 pounds. What have you got to say? I don't know, I'm bewildered. <laughs> Has it brought more or less than your anticipation, more than you hoped? A lot more. Congratulations on your collection, Mary. A fabulous result. £1,380, taking home £1,214. Now that is what I call a real deal. That is a fantastic price. All that collecting paid off, Mary. Well done to you. Our four dealers have offered up over £2,000 of their own money on today's show. Have they turned their items around and made a profit? Janice was very careful with her cash. 60. Janice has put a, a reasonable offer, but I think it's a safe offer. Both her items went to auction and made more under the gavel. <laughs> Debbie had one purchase today. Anything miniature always is good, holds its value. She sniffed out a collector for the scent bottle and made a little markup. James was a busy boy on today's show with three buys. Time stood still for the clock after paying £90. It's no good to anyone. <laughs> As it's still unsold. I have a feeling once it hangs on my wall at home, it's going to stay there for a bit. Another loss. Well, you knew that was coming, James. The painting is now taking pride of place in the late residence. Are you happy with that? But after paying way over the odds for the commemorative silk, James still managed to make a tidy profit. 
And finally, we come to Mark. OK. Oh, Carol, you're driving a real hard bargain for me here. You're cutting all my profit out. Not quite all your profit, Mark. The Rolex pocket watch was sold on to an American dealer for £660. Oh, that's fantastic. He only had one buy. Oh, thank you. But thank Mark you. still managed to make more than all of the other dealers combined. Top work, Mr there. Stevens. <laughs> We've had a great day here in North Wales. Just look at this crowd. There's been lots of action, lots of buying, lots of selling. That's what I like to see. Don't forget to join me, David Dickinson, next time for Dickinson's Real Deal. See you 